Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast. I'm Billy Embody. With me is Shay Dixon on this Monday, breaking down a lot of recruiting, a lot of transfer portal talk here on the podcast. So let's jump right in here. Shay, it has been quite the run of LSU targets, players that they're after in the transfer portal. So let's take a moment. Let's reset things here. Uh, they've targeted multiple guys out of the transfer portal, especially at safety. We've seen some decisions made. We've seen some players maybe trend away from LSU, but we also see LSU heavily involved with a few prospects left, or players, I should say. Trey Amos, the UL defensive back, ends up committing to Alabama. Michigan State wide receiver Keon Coleman. Doesn't seem like LSU is going to turn up the heat there on him. Uh, R.J. Moten uh, from Michigan is headed to, uh, or is um, uh, R.J. Moten, um, is going to Michigan, uh, or from Michigan, is going to um, Florida. Florida. Thank you, Shay. Uh, and Antonio Carter uh, is headed to Notre Dame. He's the Rhode Island safety that didn't make it down to LSU or Florida, for that matter, this weekend. That leaves Notre Dame running back Logan Diggs and Tulane defensive back Andre Sam out of the transfer portal. This is a good time to take a reset here. Just wrapped up an official visit weekend for LSU with Logan Diggs. What's been your overall takeaway from this kind of run that they've been on, trying to plug some holes here and there while also being in the mix to land multiple transfers? I mean, that's what it is. Brian Kelly talked about the second portal window, which ran for only 15 days after spring practices, as just being a depth piece for people. And some talented guys went in, but – you're also, I think for them, we'll talk about Andre Sam, but you were swinging for, as you mentioned, RJ Moat out of Michigan, it's, you know, playing safety, Antonio Carter out of Rhode Island as safety. They had offered these guys, but ultimately weren't able to reel them in. As you noted, Carter didn't even come down and visit. And that's kind of how the portal can work. It's, it's tough to nab down. Some guys take all these visits. Some guys have planned out a bunch of visits and then do much like Antonio Carter did. Take one visit, you see a fit. You shut it all down and you're done. So I think it's it's odd. The first portal window, there were so many guys and it was before spring practices. It was one of those situations where there was a lot of high level players and they were going to spots where they felt like, OK, I'm going to go in and compete. Some guys were younger. I feel like at least with the people at LSU are involved with right now, Billy, everybody is like only got a year or two of eligibility left or is kind of on that brink of it. Right. So in this second portal window, they're looking for playing time, which that's as a coaching staff, what you got to convince guys or make the pitch to guys of, Hey, you can get playing time here. And I think Keon Coleman, great example. LSU super deep at receiver. Would he be able to play at LSU? Yeah, of course. But there's a reason a team like Ole Miss, for instance, is trending and they get him to campus. They don't have a ton of receivers. A couple of guys uh, are no longer with the team, Chris Marshall being one of them, a uh, five-star out of A&M, who lasted, what, a cup of coffee with Ole Miss before he was dismissed from the team. So Coleman can look at Ole Miss and say, okay, they've got a couple of quarterbacks, including you know two transfers they brought in, including Walker Howard, but they've got a starter returning. They brought in Spencer Sanders, and they don't have many receivers. So you view that and you say, okay, that would make sense if he went there or to you know another school that really needs a receiver. Where I'm at with LSU right now is I do feel they really need safeties, at least one. And I do feel they could really use another running back like Logan Diggs. What Frank Wilson's having to do with Logan Diggs, Billy, is pitch, yes, we have six running backs on roster, which is a ton, but everything comes with a question mark. And I talked about this on the board on Monday. Diggs' production and his total carries in just two years is almost more than everybody that's on LSU's roster who's been on playing college football a lot longer than he has, minus Armand and Goodwin. So the reliability is there. That's what they're pitching of. Hey, look, it may look crowded, but you come in and compete and you will be getting RB1 touches if you can come through and look like you did a year ago at Notre Dame. When he's getting pitched by South Carolina or others, hey, you can be the starter. That's when you're really having to weigh, okay, do I want to go to LSU, come back home, compete? And I'm not saying he doesn't want to compete, but when you're in the back end of your career and you're leaving a school like Notre Dame where you had over a thousand all-purpose yards, yeah, you're going to look for a place that I want to continue to get touches. So 
we think we felt good about LSU and Diggs. Depending on when you guys listen to this, he might already be committed to a school. We have felt it was LSU. I just think, or I know from talking to people, that's what he's mulling over in these kind of final days and weeks before he makes the decision. And that's the case for all these guys. Andre Sam being another, he's bounced around from McNeese to Marshall to Tulane, and he hadn't even played there yet before he hit the portal again. He's got a year left. He was a 2017 high school grad. So can you convince him, hey, we need safeties and you will be able to get onto the field without saying, hey, look, we can guarantee you a starting spot because LSU can't do that. They have two starters returning in Major Burns and Greg Brooks, but both have been injured at times, Major Burns especially across the past couple seasons. I just, I know I went long-winded there, but it's so different than high school recruiting because so many of these guys are leaving a situation where they were already playing. It wasn't like they're looking for more playing time. So if you're leaving a situation where you were already playing, especially like at a Notre Dame at a high level, it's a very tough balancing act to say, hey, can I get that same amount of playing time or more at my next stop if it's a school you know, like LSU or somewhere in the SEC? Yeah, and I think where, honestly, we say fans, but fans might be frustrated is, well, you've seen LSU, you can't get a Rhode Island safety to visit. Like, what is up with that? He goes to Notre Dame. And just, I mean, people were, it is funny how the whole transfer portal kind of path goes because as soon as Antonio Carter changed his visits, he canceled a Kentucky visit to make the LSU visit, at least on paper, happen. And then he was going to go to Florida. Everybody said, oh, well, he's from Orlando, you know, mail it in, it's over, you know, whatever. It just shows how things can change and turn. I mean, we, you look at when Trey Amos, when Keon Coleman, you know, the first thing you think is, well, LSU's going to get a visit for sure. And, and you know, you got to be, you know, probably you would think a, kind of a favorite the way they've done with Louisiana prospects, but it just doesn't always work out that way. And it doesn't mean that the staff has fallen apart. I think the most important thing is that they come away with Logan Diggs. And if you can find a depth guy who's kind of on the back half of his career at safety, great. But my thing, and I've said it earlier this spring, is Logan Diggs brings something to LSU that they don't have on the roster. And to kind of put it simply, it's reliability. <laughs> and if I'm LSU and I'm Frank Wilson, you'd love to see him get across the finish line, but you just never know with this stuff. It can kind of be weird. Um, the way transfer portal commitments and, you know, uh, kind of the inner workings of all this stuff works. I mean, sometimes you see a guy and people are talking about X, Y, and Z school, and then he pops for another school and he must have quietly officially visited there at some point for the most part. It, it's just a, kind of a wild time, even in this quieter second window of the transfer portal. And look, it's one of those things too, where it's situational, but I think what's happening a lot from talking to college coaches and LSU is the beneficiary of this as well. They've done this with a number of kids. That's how they got them to commit in January. When Trey Amos goes to Bama and he's leaving and he's an out of state kid, all that they're targeting him. When um, Antonio Carter, for instance, a Florida native who went to Rhode Island goes to Notre Dame and he's got more visits coming. These staffs behind closed doors, more or less are going to say, Hey, look, either you are in now or you're not because we've got other guys we got to be in on and hosting and all of that. And I think that's why you can pop guys and all of a sudden they cancel the remainder of their visits because they see, hey, I see a fit. I don't want to lose a spot. I'm in. It's tougher to do at LSU with Louisiana kids. You don't want to burn those bridges, but they've, I think they've done well to navigate it. I'm with you. Diggs, for me at this stage, would be the one person who I can look at and say, like, that dude will make a difference if you have him on the team. I do think a Trey Amos, for, or excuse me, um, Andre Sam, for instance, any safety depth they can have that has played before, like I think they've got some young safeties on the team. Toviano, Kylan Jackson will be here this summer out of Zachary, Ryan Yates uh, coming out of Denton Geyer. They've got young safeties on the team. They just haven't ever, ever played. They were high schoolers. They should still be in high school right now, minus a couple of them that are early enrollees. A guy like Andre Sam gives you uh, experience, right? That it feels like they could use, but I don't know if that would be as big as Diggs would be just because Diggs's production is proven. Like I truly feel you can make the case if they got D Logan Diggs, he would be the best running back on roster. If you get a guy like Sam or someone at safety, they're not your best safety on roster. They're more insurance for you, which you need, but that's why I'm with you. I think Diggs for me is priority number one. 
Yeah, and I I think you make a great point about you know the young safety talent on this team. You just don't know until you throw them into the fire. I mean, you can look at it, JV and Tobiano. I mean, he looks like he's been at LSU for three years, the way he's he visited. Uh, Ryan Yates, very smart player, battle-tested, played a bunch in high school, but hasn't played in the SEC. But you just don't know. And I think that's where it's – you You could see sometimes you got to let freshmen go and make mistakes, and maybe if they don't come away with a safety – that's what they do with the Toviano or a Yates or whoever, or maybe they all stay healthy, you know, the starters and everything's fine. But, you know, with, with that group, you just don't know until the lights come on. And Harold Perkins was a guy that throughout the fall, everybody saw his athleticism and, and saw what he could do. But until the games happened, you didn't really know what you were going to get with Harold Perkins. He could have been a guy that kind of played a little bit here or there, but LSU, the nice thing they did with him, Mason Taylor, Obviously, others out there, Will Campbell, Emory Jones, they just let him go and worked out pretty well for most of them. And I, I think that's something where if they don't get a safety, they're going to just have to do it this fall. And in all likelihood, you know, no one, not no one, but they've had some injuries at safety. And so it's going to come up with those guys are going to have to just go and play anyway. But I think Logan Diggs would, quite frankly, kind of change the expectations of the this offense. Yeah, and I'll, I'll wrap up with this portal thought, too. It's just we're in this new age of the portal where we're sort of resetting our expectations. Like if there were no portal right now and the safeties were what they were, we would just be saying, hey, look, they got Major Burns and Greg Brooks. They need to move Sage Ryan back there. They can. Then they've developed a Jordan Allen. They brought in some really good guys like Kylan Jackson and and certainly Toviano and Yates. And you would just say, oh, we're going to see some younger guys probably get some run. Now in the portal, especially like in the second window, it's almost like you look around and just are like, hey, any worry that we have that we're going to have to play a young guy, let's go grab someone that's a veteran that can kind of smooth that process or that transition a little bit more. So I feel like there is a lot of people or there are a lot of people pressing the panic button saying, need more safeties, got to have more safeties, you know, have to do it. It'll be fine. You'll just have to play younger guys, which you've just shifted this philosophy to where that's suddenly like a bad thing or a worrisome thing of, Oh, we're going to have to play guys that have never played before. It could, as you noted, Toviano could be great. Toviano could be better than any of these guys that are out there right now as a true freshman. I don't know, but the reality of insurance feels really good right about now. I and mean, that's kind of what the portal is about. And that's what Brian Kelly has said from the start of, Oh, I shouldn't say from the start. He's kind of always maintained that they have to rebuild the roster, but even once, it got to where it is right now, which they have probably five or six more scholarship spots open. He said, hey, look, we're talented, but our Achilles heel will be depth. If we start running into depth issues at spots or guys get hurt, it's going to show. So I think that's why you're seeing them kind of really go after multiple safeties late, um, multiple corners, even after they took a ton out of high school in the first portal window. It's just that reality of, hey, what more can we have that can – just give us a little bit more depth just in case something happens. Yeah, exactly why they took Mason Lunsford, for example. So um, look, there, there's, and he's still not even here yet. He's kind of forgotten in the in the portal sense in a way because he's not here yet, And I, I think. But look, one guy that, you know, we've now got a circle is somebody not to forget about. And it's, it's often, uh, talk about situations that are now forgotten, JUCO, JUCO recruiting. Shay uh, is is one of my favorites. I think JUCO kids, they're always one willing to talk. And this is a great example of that as you got him on the phone right away. Connor Gilbreth, uh, originally from California, um, and he's out there playing JUCO ball right now um, at, are we going to say Butt College? Butte. 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 There we go. Uh, Butte College. This is a big dude that Mike Denbrock went out, watched, evaluated. And you know what? They dished out an offer. Uh, shed some light on this new name to watch for LSU fans. Yeah, he's a kid who he he told me he had a couple of like NAI. He was going to go play NAI, NAIA ball coming out of high school. He said he was just playing super small ball, high school football, had only started playing tight end really as a junior. And instead of that said, hey, I'm going to go Juco. And I think I can maybe get a little bit more eyes on me that way. And it paid off. And I think he's picked up LSU, a number of more offers over the past kind of two weeks. He said, I think. Miami offered a few weeks back, may have been like two weeks ago. And since then, it's just sort of been a run of offers for him. And Mike Denbrock, who's LSU's OC, is also the tight ends coach. 
made this pitch and Gilbreth told me this is the same thing coming from a lot of coaches. He's six, six two sixty right now. And you don't hear this often, but he was, it was kind of funny when we were talking, he was like, yeah, I'm a tight end, but I could care less about catching a football. I don't want to, I know guys are all about the glory. I just want to block people. And the goal for him then would be to grow into an offensive tackle. And this happens more than people think it's just happening at the high school level into college. And, you know, guys will start out at tight end and then eventually start playing offensive line in high school. He's doing that at the Juco route. But he said, look, I've now got the credits to immediately enroll in a place like LSU this fall, be a blocking tight end, which they really need because they don't have anyone really beyond Mac Markway, who hasn't played football in two years as a true freshman, being the one real blocking guy they have. They want to be able to run multiple tight ends where one of them is a blocker and he fits that mold. And then, oh, he can also then turn around and develop into an offensive tackle. And if you look at the numbers and Brian Kelly does it and has a proven track record of it at Notre Dame, these guys aren't 325 pounders coming out of high school. Go look at the offensive tackles and linemen that are getting drafted each year. They were playing D end in high school. They were playing tight end in high school. They were a 280 pound, you know, offensive lineman in high school. It's so much easier to take that athleticism and put weight on them and put muscle on them and make them into really talented offensive linemen than it is to go out and take a 340 pounder, hope that he loses 20, you know, 30 pounds, and then that he's got some athleticism buried in there. It's far more often that the recipe is on the other end of that. And Brian Kelly knows that. And that's why I like the offer to Gilbreth. I'm, He's got a visit to Missouri this weekend. He's going to be at LSU in June. I'm sure he'll set up a couple of other visits as well uh, because of the offers he's getting. But he really was just like, look, I'm blown away. Uh, two weeks ago, I didn't have, I had a Portland State offer and nothing else. And now I've got offers from everyone. You know, not everyone, but LSU, Tim is everybody. Miami, Missouri, Washington. I think there's some others in there as well. So we'll monitor him. But this is something they've been looking for. We've talked about. He's not a veteran tight end, but he is a tight end who has at least one year of JUCO experience and can come in healthy and be a good blocking option for you that maybe develops into an offensive lineman down the road. So Connor Gilbreth is someone we will continue to monitor. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is when you have the scholarship flexibility that they do, this is one of those nice to haves. I mean, remember um, Charles Turner came in as a blocking tight end there. He was so light, but. Uh, he wasn't a uh, 265 or so. He was right around 250 uh, coming out of high school at IMG. But yeah, this is one of those positions where I think LSU needs to address um, Mac Markaway, uh, who got a lot of burn in the spring. Same with Jackson McGohan. Those guys are freshmen, and Mac Markaway has been you know hurt and recovering, kind of getting ready for college the last you know couple of years. Um, Jackson McGohan is a guy that needs to continue to develop his his body and things like that. And then Kamorian Pimpton, who comes in this summer, is definitely kind of a, pat, a, a pass catcher. And you want to run two tight end sets with Mason Taylor. Getting a guy this big, smart move by LSU. Um, and we'll see how it goes. If he develops into a nice swing tackle, at the very least, guy who ends up starting late in his career, that's that's a real big positive for LSU down the road. So I like the offer. We also like our friends at Rogue Shop, Shay. Uh, our friends, Richard and Char, the husband and wife outfit that run this small craft cannabis company continue to hook it up for Bengal Tiger subscribers with promo code Bengal Tiger for 10% off your order at rogueshop.com. You can get your tinctures, your gummies, your pre rolls, pain creams, all of those things. Um, Shay, I, I think I'm going to finally take more of a consistent jump into a uh, little gummy train, try to figure out what I need from Richard and Char to sleep better. I've been just quite honestly, waking up at two in the morning, four in the morning, and then having to figure out a way to go back to sleep. I've heard your stories, I'm ready to jump in uh, head first into uh, sleeping better and, and not having that kind of insomnia. I'll, I'll tell you this, it's about to be vacation season. Kids are out of school. People are going on trips, um, going on a couple flights, long flights, and already got with them, found out ones that basically I said, hey, look, want to be able to sleep on the flight, want to be able to just, conk out got it done already ordered some they're in um whatever you need like you said char is great they're always right there in the chat they've been great to us and uh look they keep continuing to put more new stuff up, up on, on the website too i check it every week so if you've not been on the website even recently 
Go check out rogueshop.com. Like Billy said, whether it's THC, whether it's CBD, they've got a wide variety of stuff on there. But I will give you, um, I'm on the the CBD gummies is what I have uh, grabbed. And in fact, uh, recently they actually sold out. They'll probably be restocking here soon of uh, the heaviest doses of them. But whether it's 12 milligrams, whether it's more than that, um, they've even got some, this is perfect, some slap your mama uh, cannabis gummies, uh, very Cajun uh, of them almost. It almost almost reminds me of a good uh, seasoning, but a very potent sleeping aid uh, as well as chronic pain to a 275 milligram one. So no matter what you're looking for, they've got. Yeah. And so I, I'm going to jump on the train, use my promo code Bengal Tiger for 10% off my order, jump in the chat with them and, and figure it out. So um, yeah, I'm the same with you. Some travels, some plane flights already hit some of those earlier this month and it, it's time to uh, take back a good night's sleep. And if you have problems sleeping, anxiety, stress, all those things, they can help you out at rogueshop.com. Billy, take one of the 275 milligram ones and see how many days you sleep for. <laughs> we'll just do a pod too. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you to Rogue Shop. Always a great support uh, of the Bengal Tiger podcast and other podcasts on the On3 network. So uh, speaking of support, LSU has used just about everybody on staff, it seems like, to recruit this guy out of Lafayette. Now could be closing in on commitment time. And Lafayette Christian Academy quarterback, who's an athlete, of course, in the recruiting rankings, Jawan Johnson was at LSU on Monday, he recently canceled all of his official visits this summer. Shay, this has got to be good news for the Tigers, just like Deshaun McBride. You don't swing through campus if, you know, you've canceled all your official visits, right? Yeah, no. I mean, he what decommitted from Colorado, which a lot of people didn't think was going to last anyways. I think it lasted a couple of months. Um, and that was part of the early wave of Colorado buzz when Dion was bringing in a bunch of transfers and landing a bunch of high school guys. But he backs off that commitment, opens things up. And Billy, it was about a week ago that he was like, he told on three, Spiegelman, Sam caught up with him and he said, look, I've already got the dates. I'm going to Ole Miss in June. I'll be at Florida. And then I'm going to wrap up with LSU. When you go and cancel all of them a week later and then just publicly say, I'm no longer taking any official visits. Oh, and then two days after that, I'm bringing my whole family to LSU's campus. That's usually a good sign. So we both have had on three RPM picks in for LSU, Sam as well. We have felt good about this one. Now we feel even better that this could be done soon. By the time maybe some people later in the week are listening to the pod, uh, it could already be done. So sorry for giving you late news there, but we feel good about it. And again, he, on, on three as well as the industry rankings, he's a top 10 player in Louisiana, number seven player in Louisiana. And we are still continuing that count, Billy, to where – I'm looking at the on three rankings right now. All 10 players, or excuse me, everyone who's in the top 10 is either uncommitted in Louisiana, top 10 players in Louisiana, either uncommitted or they're committed to LSU. This would be another domino that would drop in that group. And you're already then trending ahead of where you were a year ago when you only landed, what, three or four of the top 10 in-state guys in that transition year from Orgeron uh, to Kelly, where a lot of that was expected and comes with the territory. But you wanted to put that fence back up immediately. This is another big step towards it. And look, Billy, he plays quarterback at LCA. They're one of the best teams in the state. He had a phenomenal state title game, and they're obviously playing the highest level of classification as well. Uh, or four, I think four or five A, one of the two. Uh, but up there, competition is elite. I just, I think that you see the athleticism there, and he's being recruited at corner. He had basically never played corner. We went to camp last summer when they brought him in and worked him out at corner. And they basically were like, hey, we'll take your commitment right now. So for a kid who plays quarterback now and doesn't just isn't a pure corner to be ranked where he is, which is what a top 25, top 20 cornerback nationally, and he's not playing it. That's someone who you can develop, someone that you can, again, keep home in Louisiana. But in my opinion, beyond like Wardell Mack, who's playing at John Eric uh, and plays both ways, probably one of the more athletic guys in the cycle. And just in terms of pure athlete out of Louisiana, someone who, in my mind, you don't want to let leave the state. These are the kind of guys you want to reel in. It would be definitely big news for them. 
Yeah, no question. And I think for, for Juwan Johnson, he's a guy that I don't think he runs track, but um, from what I've seen out of him, I like his agility. And that was the thing that stood out in his camp workouts. I don't think he really is a guy that's going to wow you. He's on the smaller side, so shorter strider um, in his, you know, 40 or 100 if he ran it and things like that. But his agility side to side is exactly what you want in that nickel spot. That's why they offered that day. There was some thought he was going to pop that day, but um, obviously took it to the fall and then into the spring. And, and we've gone through this little song and dance, but would be huge news for LSU long term at the nickel spot to get him on board. And, um, you know, between Frank Wilson, Robert, Robert Steeples, you know, all those guys, support staff out there, Sherman Wilson, Jordan Arsmo, everybody they've been involved with recruiting Juwan. This would be a nice feather in the cap um, to really, you know, even if May ended today. But we'll see. They're starting to get on a roll in Louisiana, Shay. Yeah, I like it. I mean, they pop from Trades Green to Deshaun McBride to maybe someone that we feel good about, like a Juwan Johnson. Again, I just keep pointing to those top 10, 15 players in the state, the guys that they've got offers out to. You want those dominoes to drop before their senior season. So whether that's right now, whether that's in June at camp or official visits, or whether that's right before they start their senior year, that's the goal. You don't want to have to go all the way to December with a bunch of guys and hinge your hopes on signing day, right? You want to have them all in the boat. This would be a big one, domino to drop. And again, from talking, we've talked to multiple um, sources behind the scenes uh, on the LSU side who said, the more these Louisiana kids, and this is obvious, continue to commit, the more the other kids in the state see it and feel better about saying, oh yeah, I'm on board too. I want to be in too. So this is a guy who knows a lot of the kids in the state. He's buddies with a lot of those guys. Um, LCA is always putting out talent. If he commits, it'd probably be LCA and Destrahan have the most guys on the current LSU roster from those schools. Um, but one to keep tabs on. We think this one could happen very soon. Yeah, no question. And look, one's a, a couple that have already happened. Uh, we want to give them a shout out on the podcast. Two guys that have signed on for LSU that are arriving this summer. Caleb Jackson, the four-star running back out of Baton Rouge, and DJ Chester, the four-star offensive lineman from Georgia, both now state champions in, um, or uh, I should say, DJ Chester, state champion Caleb Jackson with an impressive run, especially at his size, in the 100-meter. Uh, Caleb Jackson finished third. Shea, he's somebody that recovered very well from that ankle injury he suffered this season. For him to bounce back this way is really impressive. Kyle, and he uh, told me the other day that he's almost to, I think he was at 218, so he's close to 220 pounds and finishing top three in the state in 5A in the 100 meter. Um, Matty B, Matthew Brun, uh, had a great article uh, on the Bengal Tiger on Monday about everyone on LSU's current team who had run track in high school and what their times looked like. Jalen Brown, who is the fastest guy they signed uh, this past cycle at wide receiver, runs a 10, you know, is running a 10 6 5. As a junior, he was an early enrollee now, uh, but that's blazing. Then you look at what a guy like Caleb Jackson has been able to do running a 10-6-1. I think he's got probably five or six times that were sub 10-8 uh, in the 100 this offseason. He has a, a 200 meter in the 22s, uh, which is a lead as well. I mean, for comparison, Armani Goodwin would probably be considered one of your fastest running backs on roster. He's been hurt a lot, but he's got it that game-breaking speed. He was a 10-8 guy in high school. He was running a 24-second 200. So the more and more we find out, like Caleb Jackson didn't play football last year minus like three plays because he broke his ankle or had a leg injury in that very first game, missed the whole year. Then he comes back and is putting down these times in the spring. So now, no doubt is he not only healthy, but he's back to where he was before. He's elite. Logan Diggs or not, I think Caleb Jackson's playing some football for LSU this year. I couldn't agree more. Beat me to it. Said it on the podcast earlier. I think Caleb Jackson could play as a true freshman. I think if he figures out pass protection, which is always the caveat with running backs, but if he figures out the pass protection, he's not getting shooed off the field like John Emery was by Joe Burrow. Oh, I forgot about that. Okay. And I feel like running back is one position where freshmen do get a little run. Like, you'll yeah. get out there. See if you can get the hot hand. And especially if there's some battling injuries still or again or however it works out. Like, Caleb Jackson has that game-breaking speed that, I mean, LSU has on paper in a sense, but doesn't have, like, you know, proven on the roster to consistently be there in a way. So, 
very high on Caleb Jackson on this podcast. So are we on DJ Chester. I think he's going to be able to play multiple positions at LSU, center or guard, wherever he fits in along the interior. Well, he just won the shot put and discus in his classification in the state of Georgia as well. Um, look, LSU is, is starting to kind of reap the benefits of prioritizing Georgia and DJ Chester will be here this summer and uh, be the latest one. Yeah, how about that? A couple of a discus and a shot put to a win. Kamorian Pimpton, I know, he, I, th I think he had a bad regional, uh, so he didn't make state finals in Texas, but he had some wild uh, shot put in discus. I think discus was uh, really where he had had some big numbers, but they're bringing in guys who have proven versatility is really good track and field guys, which we say it all the time. It translates that shows athleticism, whether it's the power of an offensive lineman, um, just it's wild that Kamorian Pimpton with his wingspan is able to, can throw a shot put in discus, let alone be one of the best in Texas. And then a guy like Caleb Jackson at 220 running those times is is wild. Um, who is our guy uh, out of Texas, Houston, the little speedy receiver that there was? Jelani Watkins. He won the 200 uh, yeah, in Texas Watkins. this past weekend. He put down like a time too, like 20, it was like 20 four, something. 25 4, 26 1. Um, yeah, it was, it, I, I think he went sub 21. I don't know what the wind was that day, but when legal, he, when legal is what I saw some of, a uh, uh, one of our great subscribers, Texas tiger Two, 25 for wind legal in the 200 meter. So shout out Texas tiger Two for posting that on the board. That's flying. I think Caden Durham was third or fourth. That's the running back. They love out of Duncanville, but that five, what are they? What are they? Six, a five, a that group was just. The state title was like 10 guys who were all running sub 10 sixes or, you know, it was just insane athletes coming out of that area or, or certainly in, as a whole in Texas. But shout out to a couple of those guys, too. Certainly on LSU's radar. They've been all over both of them. I think we've had them both in our class predictions at different points. I know they were both in mine at one point. So potential to continue to bring on a lot of speed to this team, which I think is key. Finally, one last prospect, uh, one of the best running, well, I should say, now the top-ranked running back in the country for on three in the 2025 class. Harlem Berry obviously brings that speed as well in the 100 meter. Um, he just moved up to the number 11 overall prospect in the country for on three. Tigers leading the on three RPM pick. I'm excited to see him get to it this fall, and I'll also be out tomorrow, Tuesday, um, at James Simon, the other I should say other, but another really impressive 2025 running back in North Louisiana that LSU's after. So if you're in Shreveport, come say what's up at the Calvary spring game. Uh, we might get together for some food beforehand if you're around. So yeah. if you want to hang out with Billy. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> Harlem Berry, uh, as you noted, won the 100. So that's his second. And he's only a sophomore in high school. That's his second uh, class 1A 100 uh, meter dash championship state title here in Louisiana. But you could put him in any classification because he won it with a 10.57. So, I mean, he's flying for a kid who's a sophomore. Then he got second place in the 200 meter uh, with a 21.43, which is also flying. Uh, Jermaine Brown out of Kentwood, who went second in the 100 and then first in the 200, uh, is more of just a pure track athlete. He'll probably run track in college. It's just continues to impress me that guys like Barry, guys like Caleb Jackson, these kids are – Barry's what 190 pounds already as a sophomore. Jackson's about to go to college. He's at 218, and they are outrunning legit track sprinters that you know are not football players that just focus on track. So Harlan Barry, well deserved uh, spot, and now he is the on three industry and on three uh, rankings number one in the country, number one prospect in Louisiana, obviously as well. Or not obviously, I guess I can explain that to you, but. Big, big, big name uh, on the board for, for next year. Not this current cycle, but next cycle. One more note on 2025. Devin Harper, four-star offensive lineman out of Captain Shreve. Picked up an offer from LSU as well. Um, the RPM now heavily in favor of the Tigers in that one. Brad Davis was by to see him at his spring game. So that there you go, another four-star. Shout out Shreveport, man. They're putting Shreveport. some kids out. It's rolling. The Shreve, it's rolling. So good stuff. It, I think it, beyond... Metro New Orleans, uh, not I think, I know for a fact, I did a story on it and looked it up, uh, that Shreveport had the most kids drafted this past cycle. Um, so shout out Shreveport. Love to see it. Love to see it. And uh, love to see you guys subscribing 
to thebengaltiger.com. $30 for six months, so hit that subscribe button at thebengaltiger.com as well as to our YouTube channel. Appreciate all you guys who have done that already. Summer is getting close, um, really starting to heat up, so be sure to be on there for all the official visit scoop. We dropped a couple of those over the weekend as well, and uh, we'll have you covered on the transfer portal front as well. So with that, for Shay Dixon, I'm Billy Embody, shutting down this edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast. We will catch you guys later this week with another edition of the podcast. So check back in. We'll talk to you then.